The next part of the video um, is interesting. I had to figure out how this worked because when I took it apart during the initial disassembly, uh, I found this came out and there were four ball bearings in the bottom of the crank here in the bottom of the, the lower unit. And I'm like, well, what is that all about? Just while I'm here, I'll point out the bearing rollers on this look really, really good. Um, they, they don't look worn at all. So I'm pleased to see that. Anyway, so this bearing is attached to this gear and they both ride over this shaft. So this bearing is pressed on there and there they, they spin on the shaft. This gear is connected to, well, this is part of, this is right here is part of that gear and it spins on that shaft. And without the ball bearings in place, they freely spin on the shaft. However, I'm gonna take it apart and it's gonna pop out on me here. So I don't know if you can see that. There's a ball bearing there and there's one that fell out on the bench from the other side. And then the first one fell out. So they go in those little holes. There are two holes on the shaft at this end for this gear. And then there are also two holes. Oh, in case you're wondering, there's a thrust washer there or a little washer there. And didn't pop them out, but you can hopefully see in the camera. There's another bear ball bearing there and one in there. Okay, put that on so I don't lose them. Now, those ball bearings are controlled. Actually, this has to go up here. Those ball bearings are controlled by this little guy right here. And this guy has a divot in it. As you can see, it's got one there and one there. And when this shaft gets pushed in this way, it will cause those ball bearings to rise out of this shaft and lock with the gear. So if you can see in the gear, see that shiny part right there? Right there. That's a raised part. Let's see if I can get a better view. It's raised right there. Uh, camera's giving me a hard time. Oh, there we go. You can see it now. So the ball bearings raise out of that center shaft and interfere with that little bump right there. And there's another one right there. And when it interferes with that bump, it locks the gear to the shaft. And so depending on the position of this little shaft right here that pushes in and out, it depends on whether the shaft is locked to this gear, or the shaft is locked to this gear. And of course, as you know, this goes in and out based on how this guy is going, uh, you know, in and out there. Okay, so before I put that shaft in, I better get organized with this pinion gear here. So it's a gear mounted on this shaft and it's got a thrust washer, a bearing and a thrust washer. Now, when I took this apart, I found that guy, and this guy, lying in the bottom of the case. And this is part of the upper thrust washer, or sorry, the lower thrust washer that broke. And I'm guessing that might be used, like that's probably under pressure in reverse maybe. I think that's the one that's in, pre in, in reverse. And because it broke, it took out this bearing. Didn't seem to do any other damage though, which is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> and so I bought a, uh, another set, bearings and wa washers thrust washers and bearing. Now, they go back together in a specific way. And I, what I want to tell you here is the one closest to the gear is thinner than the one furthest from the gear. So that's the first thing. So of course the bearing goes in the middle, but the thin gear, the thin washer, the, the bearing, and then the thick washer goes on the top of this whole assembly. And that thick washer actually has a bevel on it. And I wasn't sure whether the, be the bevels on this side, it might be hard to see on the camera, right there. Anyway, I was wondering whether the bevel should go up towards the power head or down towards the prop shaft. And from this one, I can see the wear where that bearing has spun around and kept that clean. So that's the surface that goes towards the bearing and this top surface goes towards the power head. And in fact, it's the bevel that faces the power head and the bevel does not face that little bearing. So that's a critical detail. You might not even notice that bevel if you weren't looking. 
Okay, well, I have tried this a few different ways, and with the, the gear that has the bearing pressed on it, at the end of this shaft, if that's inserted first, then you cannot get the pinion gear in. So, instead what I did, is I turned the thing upside down, I put the pinion gear in with its two thrust washers and bearing, then I easily put this forward gear in, and now I'm going to see if I can somehow get this shaft in with those two ball bearings without them falling out. But before going further, I want to point something out. This is the outer edge of the bearing, or sorry, the shaft where it protrudes from the gear case, and then the prop goes on here. If you find that there are grooves worn in here and, and it's leaking there, um, if it's worn badly, a new seal may not even fix that problem. So what you can sometimes do is, depending on you know, how bad the groove is and where it is and where the seal is within the housing, you can put a new seal in, but maybe don't drive it in as far or drive it in a little bit further and it will change the position where that seal touches the shaft and there might be enough metal left on the shaft in that new place to uh, to allow it to seal. But in this case, oh, I can feel something there, but it's not a cause problem. Okay, so this is the final assembly procedure here. You put that, uh, it's upside down, it's right set up now, but I uh, installed the pinion gear first, then that uh, gear right at the this part inside the gear case then with these ball bearings um, they didn't want to really cooperate so uh, I put a little grease on them to hold them in place I don't really like to do that because grease isn't supposed to be in a gear case with oil but the amount of grease that's there is so minor it'll be fine and grease isn't like it's you know it's still a lubricant um, so I put those ball bearings in the front greased in and then I put this gear right over the shaft, so I kind of abandoned my idea of needing that thrust washer to hold those bearings, uh, those ball bearings in the back. And I'm going to slide the whole thing in, and when I do, it's going to compress the spring in here, and uh, I'm going to make sure that this gear mates with the pinion gear, and that will tell me that the whole thing is in as far as it needs to go, and then I will put the outer assembly on. Oh. <clears throat> Uh, this all worked the way I expected it to. Um, put the shaft in with that uh, front gearing ar gear already in place, the pinion already in place, and the ball bearings in the front held in with grease. They stayed there. That worked perfectly. And then the gear on the back, it was uh, on the shaft with the thrust washer ahead of it. And um, so the gear itself held the bearings in. And when I pushed this all, or sorry, when I... Uh, when I slid the, the rear gear, when I slid it in, of course, the spring load, the spring inside of that shaft was pushing on the little shift mechanism, which was holding the whole thing forward, and I expected that. So I pushed the, 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 the gear in and just set it in place, and then I lubed this shaft and put this housing on and then threaded the bolts, but it was still three, four millimeters out. So this housing was three or four millimeters out from there. So <clears throat> um, I had expected that. And what I did was after I got these bolts snugged up, just maybe a, a tad, maybe a quarter turn more than finger tight, then I took a pair of vice grips on the shift shaft and I turned it uh, just ever so slightly. And I tapped on this while I was uh, fiddling with the shift shaft. And that released the spring tension on this and allowed those ball bearings that were in the, the front, like the furthest part into the gear case, that have to go into that gear this way back here, that, that allowed those ball bearings to collapse in the shaft and then it all slid in nicely. So it took, uh, you know, five, five or ten taps with the hammer on this. And I, when I say taps, I'm not trying to drive it in heavy. I'm just trying to overcome the friction between this housing and this part right here. So I just gently tapped on either side while I would, um, you know, just kind of rock this. So th then I, of course, tighten these guys up. So now I'm in a situation where with the uh, shift shaft in place, you can actually hear it clicking. I'm going in gear, neutral, and then in another gear, neutral, in gear, neutral, other gear. So I can tell that's working well. And also to make sure those ball bearings haven't fallen out, 
before I put this housing on, I took the shift shaft and lifted, you know, kind of raised it a little bit, and I looked down near the bottom and I couldn't see any of the ball bearings. So they'd stayed, they've stayed in place. Looking down from the ceiling, looking at this lower unit, I'm spinning the drive shaft clockwise, and I can see the output shaft turning like that. And I'll shift to the other direction. I'll still spin the drive shaft clockwise, and now the shift sh or the uh, propeller shaft goes the opposite direction. So I know that the gears are working uh, forward and reverse. And um, then the next part was for me to put this drive shaft in. Well, the old one used to come in and out of there really easy. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's indicative of worn seals. When I put this one in, I, I did lube it with, uh, lube the end of the shaft with some gear oil, but when I tried to put it in, I pushed down on that seal, and while I was rotating the shaft back and forth just ever so slightly to open that seal up, um, it actually, like the seal facing like this, it actually went like, how did it go? It actually folded in on itself, and the spring, the stainless steel spring around the seal popped out. So uh, I took the shaft out, and then I used some very fine little tools to get that stainless steel spring back in place. It's back there now and the seal was not damaged, but um, this time around I took some grease on the end of the shaft and uh, it still was hard to slide in there, um, which I guess is good. That indicates it's going to be a tight seal.